I offer Easter greetings to those who are gathered in the sanctuary this morning, as well as those who are worshiping virtually. Today, we add our voices to Christians around the world and throughout the ages who have and who will continue to sing their hallelujahs. We rejoice in the hope that is ours because we have the assurance that Christ is risen. He has risen indeed. This morning, we will share together in Easter worship, Holy Communion. In the United Church of Christ, we practice an open table, meaning you are invited and encouraged to receive communion as we worship, regardless of your denominational affiliation or congregational membership. Those in the sanctuary should have received individually packaged communion elements as you entered. I invite you to get your communion elements now if you did not pick them up as you enter into the sanctuary. Now, a word about these communion elements this morning. They've been in the cold storage for three days like our Lord, okay? They may still be a little frozen, all right? So I have found it doesn't take long holding them in your hand to make them flow easily. So you might want to just hang on to it today through the service and it'll be ready to go by the time we get to communion. At St. Luke's, we offer virtual worship opportunity, which means we make every possible attempt to include virtual worshipers in all that we do, including sharing communion. I encourage those who are worshiping virtually to gather something at home at hand that might serve as communion elements at your home altar. I want to thank those who graciously provided the Easter lilies to adorn the Easter chancel. Your gifts are a tribute to those you remember and honor with your gifts. They also add an aroma of life and beauty fitting for a service of resurrection joy. I want to thank those who worked to provide Easter breakfast earlier in the fellowship hall. There are leftovers remaining, so if you would like some for a free will offering on the way out, feel free to stop by and help yourself as long as they're there. I want to thank those who prepared the scenes as we visited this morning with the children during the Stations of the Egg. What a good time we had and enjoyed sharing the story with everyone there. By way of reminder, the church office will be closed tomorrow. There will be no daily live stream on Windows into St. Luke's tomorrow. That will resume on Tuesday. And no men's soup tomorrow. So now with hearts filled with Easter joy, let us sing our alleluias in the hope that is ours in our risen Lord.
This is a great and joyous festival day. Our worship is filled with awe and wonder. The tomb is empty. Death is not the last word. Jesus Christ is alive and we too shall live. Come to celebrate this amazing good news. Our, our hearts are glad, our tongues rejoice, we live in hope. Doubters, believers, disciples, all are invited to come to the one who makes all things new. Like the grave which could not hold our Lord, the way to forgiveness is open to all who approach God seeking forgiveness. Let us pray. Loving God, despair, pain, and fear are part of life. Sometimes we let them guide us. Sometimes we let them pull us back from following your path for us, losing sight of your strong love. Help us be a brave and holy people. Raise us up to live beyond fear. Forgive us and teach us to trust in your steadfast love. Amen. Our God has not and will not abandon us. God has made known to us the ways of life, filling us with gladness. In Christ, our sins are forgiven and we are raised up in triumphant victory. Thanks be to God. be seated invite my friends to join me the moments for many okay all right got everybody I think that's about it okay Woo. let's just take a minute just everybody go it's been a busy morning, right? It's been an exciting morning with sunrise service and breakfast and Stations of the Egg, and now here we are. Yeah, so, well, many wants to take a chance here to just kind of put, put everything in one big picture. Sometimes when we come to church, we hear this story, and then we, we leave, and we come back, and we hear a different story, and then we leave, and we come back. So many wants to take a chance just to kind of piece everything together about this Jesus who we celebrate his resurrection today. Let's think about some of the things we know about Jesus. Uh, he was born in Bethlehem, right? The baby laid in a manger. And there was a special star and angel saying, so it tells us that Jesus was a pretty special baby, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus was a pretty special baby and then we hear other stories when we come back other times in church and we find out that Jesus had, well, miraculous powers, right? He could walk on water. Not everybody can do that. Nope. I don't know anybody can do that. No, oh, I can't. I can't. I can't either. No, we sink, right? So he could do that. We, uh, we, we learned that he could heal a guy who couldn't see since he was born. He had miracle powers to heal people, and he taught uh, really good lessons and preached really good sermons so that like 5,000 people came and listened to him. And that was not even counting those who were virtual, right? He had all these people gathered around listening to him, and he's doing these miracles. He had special power of God. So, we also learned this morning in Stations of the Egg that the Empire killed Jesus, right? And put him in a tomb. 
But remember who he was. He was a special baby born in Bethlehem who grew up and had miraculous powers. We understood and he taught that he was the son of God. So you know what? Really, when you think about it, when they put him in that tomb, it shouldn't be a surprise that he didn't stay. It'd be more surprising if they could have killed him and put him there and he stayed there. We're talking about the Son of God, right? So it shouldn't be a surprise that he came out of that tomb. We don't know how he did it, except he was the Son of God. He had miraculous powers of God resting on him and in him. Maybe he disappeared. Well, he didn't. He didn't, though. He appeared to his friends. And that's the next part of the story that we want to think about today. He didn't just disappear. What would you do if you'd been dead for three days? You'd been stuck in a tomb. The rock was there. You couldn't get out. But all of a sudden, God's power brought you back to life. What would you do? You could probably kick it up and have a party, right? Yeah. You'd have fun. Well, here's what Jesus did. He said, you know, I've been dead for three days. I bet my friends are worried sick about me. I bet they're sad. So the first thing he did was go to his friends who felt alone, who felt like maybe he had abandoned them. Maybe he'd let them down. So the first thing he did was go to his friends and say, don't be afraid. It's me. I'm here. I'm alive. It's all good. And he said, wherever you go, I'm going to be with you. So we don't know how Jesus came back to life, but the power of God raised him from the dead. And this is why, so that his friends could have comfort and not feel alone. And it's still the same today. Jesus is alive, and the result of that is we will never be alone. When we're scared, when people let us down, when things don't go right, when it seems like there's a stone in our way, and everything is hopeless because Jesus rose from the dead that's not the end of the story Jesus is with us too we are never alone God is with us through everything that's the message of Easter that's why we sing Alleluia that's why we sing we're happy right because we're never ever alone Jesus lives and will be with us and come to us and comfort us and give us hope. And Jesus will protect us. And Jesus will protect us. Bless you. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the power that raised Jesus up and the love that you share and wrap around us to protect us when we're sad or when things don't go right for us. Be our hope and our promise that the story doesn't end. Amen. I want to remind you that we do continue to collect donations for disaster relief for those who have been affected by the tornadoes over the uh, United States in recent weeks. That opportunity to give can be uh, by making a note on your check as you leave it in the offering, or you can give electronically on our website or uh, through the electronic app. Let's go now to God in prayer. God of open doors and opportunities, we come with songs of joy and words of praise for your powerful love and your life-giving grace. Like those first disciples who ran to the empty tomb, calm our harried thoughts that we might hear the message of Christ's glorious resurrection. Like the grieving Mary who searched in the garden, Reveal the presence of Christ to us that we might hear you call our name. Transform our hearts by rolling away stones of doubt that we might be a resurrection people, experiencing the life-giving power of your Spirit and revealing your loving presence for all the world to see. May our lives be the continuing expression of your love in action. May we hear and proclaim the assurance 
that even when it looks like our own stories have ended in despair, that you are with us, all of us, when our souls are discontent, when hope and options seem to have run out, fill every heart with assurance that you are with us, we are not alone. Let us lift our voices and pray as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Scripture reading comes today from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 7. Maybe someone who was at the sunrise service can recite that from memory. we already been through it once, but let's hear it again. Mark, chapter 16, beginning with verse 1. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they could go and anoint Jesus' dead body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they came to the tomb. They were saying to each other, Who's going to roll the stone away from the entrance for us? They looked up. They saw that the stone had been rolled away, and it was a very large stone. Going into the tomb, they saw a young man in white robe seated on the right side. They were startled. But he said to them, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He isn't here. Look, here's the place where they laid him. Go tell his disciples, especially Peter, that he is going ahead of you into Galilee. And you will see him there just as he told you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Maybe they had been up all night, not a wink of sleep, disturbed by the echo of the sound of that hammer that nailed the Lord to the cross. The memory 
of the taunting crowd. Sleep may have escaped them, as had their hope. They had hoped he was the Messiah. They had hoped he would bring the long-awaited promised peace and the kingdom of God. But their hope had died with him and now was lying in a stone-cold tomb. Maybe they'd set up all through the night trying to hush the cries of their hearts with stories. Stories of things they remembered about the life they had shared with him. Stories of the lessons they had heard him teach. Stories of the miraculous ways he had healed them or those they loved. Stories of compassion and forgiveness that he offered so freely to one and all. Like so many minds and hearts ringing empty from loss, they might have been trying to fill the void with stories refusing to allow the script of loss to take away the memories. Memories, stories, was all they had left for connection. Maybe they sat through the Sabbath together, waiting together as Jesus would have wanted them to, waiting for the coming light of day when they could make their way to finish what had been left undone. In the rush to lay his body in the tomb after the Sabbath, his body had not received the proper anointing. Wanting to offer their last act of devotion and kindness, wanting to, in whatever way possible, be with Jesus again, they sat together, awake, waiting for daylight, when they would do the only thing they could do. And they could grieve with their hands as well as with their hearts. With dawn's first light, off they went. As they approached the garden where Jesus had been buried, they were confronted again by reality. What about the stone? A very large stone had been placed in the door of the tomb. They knew what they wanted to do, what they needed to do, but the reality was there was a stone in their way. Just as reality began to reemerge, it happened. Well, it had already happened. The stone had already been rolled away. Seeing the stone rolled away in and of itself had to be a surprise. But the first thought might have been that they would now have the opportunity to do what they came to do, anoint the body of the Lord. They most likely remained focused on what they had come to do, rather than what God had already done. It would take a minute to see all of the opportunity that would be afforded them with the opening of the door of the tomb. Entering through the door of the tomb, the women found not the dead body of the Lord, but rather an angel, an angel who looked at them as they stood there holding in their hands all of the goods necessary for anointing. And they said, I know why you're here. You've come to find comfort in your sorrow. You have come wanting to somehow bury your despair and broken hope. You have come seeking to continue your connection with your Lord, to show your continued devotion. And because the door of the tomb is open, you will have opportunity to do what you have come to do. Not by anointing the dead body of Jesus, but by knowing the abiding presence of a living Christ. He's on the way to Galilee. Go there. And you'll have the opportunity to see him because the door of the tomb is open. He is risen. Herein is the message of Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. But notice the preface of that first Easter message there in the open tomb. The first thing the angel said to the women was, I know why you're here. You're looking for Jesus. This Easter morning, here in this sanctuary, my message to you is this. I know why you're here. I know why we're all here. We're here to sing hallelujahs. We're here 
to smell the flowers and shout, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. We're here looking for hope. We're here to stand among those who have hope. By now, we have long since given up the expectation that we would hear an explanation of how Jesus was resurrected. Matt Fitzgerald is right. He says, if people came to church to hear reason, Easter would not be the most popular Sunday of the year because there's nothing sensible about the resurrection. Easter ought to leave us scratching our heads. We're not able not able to define or even describe the resurrection. The empty tomb doesn't fit into our understanding. The first thing we ought to admit on Easter is that God is incomprehensible. And on Easter, God has done the incomprehensible. If you're here looking for explanations, you'll be disappointed. But that's not why you're here. Not really. You might think that you're here out of expectations you hold for yourself. You'd hate yourself if you weren't in church on Easter. You might think you're here out of loyalty to your family. They expect you to be in church on Easter. You might think you're here out of habit. It's Easter. Where else would we be? But deep down, you know why you're here. You're here looking for hope. You're here to be with resurrection people because they have the kind of hope that you're looking for. You're here because you're struggling to hold on to what you think you might have lost, maybe even your faith. You're here because you find yourself alone all too often. You're here because you're looking for a presence and a power that opens up opportunities to you that seem to be blocked by stones, very large ones. I know why you're here. I know why we're all here. We're here looking for hope. And the good news of the gospel is that we have come to the right place. It's interesting to know that that Greek word in the gospel of Mark that is used for the opening of the tomb in which the stone had been placed is the word door. That Greek word has a unique meaning. It also means an opportunity, as in the door of opportunity. That's a strange word for the door, an entrance, an opening for a tomb, don't you think? Opportunity. Indeed, that first Christmas morning, because the stone had been rolled away, it provided opportunity for the women to do what they'd come to do, and to do it in ways that they'd never imagined. Because the stone had been rolled away, they would have the opportunity to find hope and comfort amid their sorrow, to express their devotion to their Lord, to maintain a connection with Him. Because the stone had been rolled away, they were in the right place, even though the Lord wasn't there. Because the stone had been rolled away, because he had been raised because he went before them. The women could and would know his presence. They would not be limited to a tomb. Because the stone had already been rolled away, opportunity and hope opened up wide before them. I know why you're here. You're here to hear a truth that you won't hear anywhere else. Easter gives us the opportunity to encounter a faith that proclaims a God who cannot be contained, confined, or even described. A God whose victory over the grave could redefine our lives. We all know the limited options that exist outside of faith, and we are here hoping to catch a glimpse of that which pulses just beyond the border of every day experience and existence. Our souls have grown discontent and restless, and we're hungry for a God who is beyond explanation, a God who offers hope when all hope is gone. We share the Easter message today. He is risen. He is risen indeed. It is a message of great joy, but the preface of that joy remains the same. 
I know why you're here. Sure, we're here to smell the lilies and to sing our hallelujahs. We're here to step into the sunlight and the joy of Easter. But if we are to find Easter's fullest joy, a joy that emerges from the empty tomb where there are no lilies, a joy that emerges even through hopelessness, we need to know the resurrection is not a single event, but a loosening of God's power and light that continues to alter all things, infusing them with the grace and power of God's own holiness. It is though a door has opened and what poured out will never be stopped and that door can never be closed. We're all here looking for hope. We're here to stand among a people of hope. And we've come to the right place because the stone has already been rolled away from the door of Christ's tomb. Every tomb is open because the stone has already been rolled away from Christ's tomb. New life, new opportunity is open and can never be closed because the stone has already been rolled away. Hope goes before us and we shall see it just as Christ told us. Amen. may be seated. When we encounter the presence of the risen Christ, it makes all the difference in our view of life. We can no longer pursue the ways of death. When we realize how much we have received from a loving God, our gratitude pours forth an eagerness to share in the work of the gospel. Let us join in sharing the message of the gospel as we bring our offerings for the ministry and mission of this congregation, making the presence of the risen Christ known as he goes before us.
I invite you to pray with me as we dedicate our lives and these gifts to God. We thank you, loving God, for resurrection. We rejoice in new life that is ours in Christ. As Christ offered himself, so we would offer ourselves for your kingdom and glory. May we, along with our gifts, testify to the good news of your forgiving love and endless grace. Amen. You may be seated. The gospel says every stone has been rolled away. Proclaimed at this table are the love and grace of God that flow freely to all people because the resurrected Lord opens wide heaven's door, an open door that can never be closed. Come, receive from this table the gifts of God, love, grace, forgiveness, hope, newness of life. At this table, sing your own hallelujahs. Let us together affirm and renew our faith as printed in the bulletin. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. In the night our Lord was betrayed, after the Passover feast, he took bread, he broke it, he gave it to his friends, said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In a similar way, after the supper, Christ took the cup, he blessed it and gave thanks. He said, this is my blood, which is spilled for many. As oft as you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. Come, Holy Spirit, bless this bread and bless this cup. May they be to us heaven's open door. May they open before us the path of triumphant joy, filling our souls with gladness. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for us, that we might become the body of Christ. Do this in remembrance of him. the cup of the new covenant written upon our hearts by the Spirit of God. Do this in remembrance of Christ. Invite those who may comfortably do so to stand for the prayer of thanksgiving and parting hymn. Loving God, through the grace and mercy that are proclaimed at this table, you have called us from the shadows that would entomb our souls. In Christ's glorious resurrection, you have raised us up and set our feet on the path of life. You have filled us with joy and given us a message of hope. By the power of your Holy Spirit, let us share the good news that Christ is risen he is risen indeed. Amen.
about that music today, right? Yeah. It lifted our voices and our hallelujahs. And for those who might be visiting, it's not over. Don't go anywhere during the benediction or you will miss something that you will regret. So after the benediction, be seated and let the music lift your soul. We have sang our hallelujahs. We have smelled the lilies. We have stood with resurrection people. Let us go with the assurance that hope goes before us and we shall see it. Amen. <laughs>